Joining us now, Kevin Green, Senior Markets Correspondent for the Schwab Network to discuss some market movement here. Uh, KG, a little bit of weakness in the equity market. You might point to this 10-year auction, which I'm seeing uh, one of the biggest tails we've seen since December of 22. Should we be surprised with this move that we've seen in rates over the last couple weeks? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised with the auction results here, uh, Alex. When you're kind of looking at it, we've seen around a 55 uh, basis point move to the downside since the end of July. So there's been a lot of movement, and it was going to be a really good gauge here to see where large institutional investors were, really wanted to put their money. So we did actually see the bid to cover ratio, which is showing the amount of dollars offered compared to the auction size. That came in at 2.32. Uh, previously, the last month, that was sitting at around 2.52 or uh, 2.58, and that was actually the lowest bid to cover that we've seen since the April. April auction and April is seasonally actually fairly weak. But you're right, uh, we did see the uh, the high yield coming in at 3.96 percent, when the market was trading at 3.93 percent. So you did see around a three basis point differential, and we saw yields actually spiking to the upside, and then we saw equities moving to the downside. But one thing to just kind of note, we've seen a lot of wide movements and a lot of uh, crazy movements. Let's just say that over the last couple of trading sessions in the S&P 500. So I would not be surprised if we either uh, see try. A try to recover here, which we have recovered around 30 points off of the uh, the lows for today, or uh, maybe we slide even further. Who knows? And I think that's a great point, Kevin, because really we don't know. We just know what we've been given and we're seeing I mean, some of this pressure, but at least holding on to green in three of the four major indices here is the Russell's now the lagger down about four tenths of a percent. But to totally shift gears and look at some of these semiconductor names, I first want to look at Intel because I think this story is fascinating. We got this Reuters report that they pass on an investment in open AI. I mean, thinking their CEOs that basically they didn't think that these generative AI models would make it to market in the near term. I mean, what a misstep. And of course, we could all be Monday morning quarterback. I mean, we could all say like, what a huge mistake. Obviously, they didn't know at the time. But I mean, this is fascinating. Walk me through your thoughts. Yeah, and, you know, this is a type of scenario when it comes to Intel that they've just missed the mark on several different areas when you're looking at the technology space, especially when you're looking at the AI space. Now, obviously, they did have an opportunity between 2017 and 2018 to have around a 15 percent stake in the company here. Uh, and unfortunately, they did not take that offering. As you kind of talked about, they believe that the viability of generative AI uh, maybe was a little bit more hype than actually reality. And now you're kind of seeing the the, the effects of that. And they also uh, had an issue here when it came to the, even the, the processors themselves. Uh, Intel has really been focusing on CPUs uh, rather than large GPUs in order to process a lot of the data for these models. And the GPU space is really what's taken off over the last year, year and a half, which is why you are seeing uh, NVIDIA as well as maybe AMD in some respects uh, catching a little bit more of a bid than Intel. So this just kind of shows that some of the recent actions that have been taken from as far as layoffs and strategic cuts within their business m m is more likely the result of just bad timing and maybe bad management when it comes to Intel and their vision for technology moving forward. Kevin, it seems this space has just had a, a, a shift in kind of a tone around it. Uh, you look at the semiconductor index, the SOX, there's just sellers that are coming in uh, in this space far more rapidly than they were the first half of this year. Uh, I'm looking at sort of the intraday action, these names opening higher, uh, now lower in many cases. The next one on our list, ARM, is no exception to some of that weakness today. Looking at it in real time, it's down 4%, and this is after it got bludgeoned post-earnings. Yeah, we are seeing that uh, happen because we are seeing analysts really adjust their their ratings in, uh, on the shares. And and I think when you're looking at it from a high level standpoint, you also have to keep in mind if you're uh, having some of these bigger winners in your portfolio, maybe you sell them off and try to reallocate that capital into some other sectors or, or defensive sectors. That might be the case right now. But we are seeing Bernstein actually upgrading ARM uh, to a market perform from an underperform with a price target of $100, and that's up from $92, just showing uh, the fact that they have confidence when it comes to the mobile uh, royalty growth that they have seen here. So maybe a lot of these names have been oversold and maybe they look attractive for analysts, uh, but we are seeing a, a definite rotation. The last thing I want to just highlight here, when you're kind of looking at Intel, and we don't know what the answer is going to be, Alex, but if you're kind of looking at price to book, uh, Intel's trading at only around a 17% premium to compared to its book value. 
you got to start looking, you know, at the at the debt market and maybe some of the, the, the fixed income products that they have offered here. And maybe there's a little bit of a, uh, a catch up trade that a lot of institutions might be highlighting, because at this point, it's a lot cheaper uh, from a book value standpoint, just in general, uh, than its competitors. And, you know, it's not a lot of premium. And that's kind of I don't want to that's a it's a scenario where their book value going this low uh puts into question the actual asset values that they have on their on their books that's basically what i'm trying to highlight here okay and that's really interesting because i i feel like a lot of these companies were trading on such lofty valuations where it's like well wait a second i mean like what is like the growth potential what is like the expectations going forward which is i think a huge reason why we saw so much selling on the back of their most recent earnings it just doesn't seem like it's enough to please what had become basically priced to like stellar or growth levels for ARM. But lastly here, really quick before we go, this is like the Kevin Green Power Hour. We're looking at Micron <laughs> with potential buybacks coming. So there's lots of news in this space today, Kevin. Yeah, so they're going to be uh, potentially uh, reinitiating their buybacks that they actually paused back in, uh, uh, in, in 2022 due to some uh, issues when it comes to the industry uh, buildup in the downturn that they've seen and just a lack of sales. And so this might be coming back into the marketplace here. And this is also going to impact some of the employee stock uh, purchasing programs that they have available. So this just once again just highlights the fact that they may have seen a little bit of a bottom. They have some opportunity when it comes to the AI space here, even though if you're looking at maybe some of the analog chips, uh, they're there's still an inventory backlog. So that's a that's a bright spot for a company that's been kind of through the ringer over the last, uh, you know, two years, three years. I, I, well, I want to capstone something. I'm sorry. We're going to go back to Intel real quick. Uh, to put it in, in, in terms of valuations, Intel is trading at a lower price to book valuation than JP Morgan. And Intel is in a growth sector like in, uh, in technology. And JP Morgan is in a mature sector like financials. That's just kind of showing you the different dynamics and how much uh, the, the market has sold off this name. Kevin, you didn't bring any optimism to this show. Four for four. You talked 10 year notes, they're lower. You talked ARM, you talked Intel, you talked Micron. Four for four lower. Bring some optimism next time. We appreciate the energy, though, as always. Uh, Kevin Green, senior markets correspondent for the Schwab Network.